this is lecture 22 of condensed matter physics 1. And we are continuing with our discussion on crystal binding. Recall that yesterday we did solids of noble gases and the interaction that we took between them was the Leonard Jones potential which was of the form that u r was 4 epsilon sigma over r raised to 12 minus sigma over r raised to 6 and schematically I had plotted it like this. Epsilon in this was of the order of one hundredth of an EV and sigma was of the order of angstrom, three or four angstroms. What I like you to do is plot it properly and see it is not really that deep that it looks, it is a little shallow, right. So, I would expect you to plot it. Plot u r versus r for neon and see for yourself the shape and in particular the depth of the potential. As I commented yesterday epsilon is of the order of 1 over 100 E V. So, it is really very shallow, but I would like you to see it for yourself. And why I am making this point is because what I am going to do today is discuss ionic crystals and I want to put this in perspective as to how strongly bounded they are in comparison to noble gas atom crystals. In ionic crystals as the name suggests the ions bind themselves in a lattice but with the difference the potential energy between two ions is going to be of the form the charge on the ion usually is the electronic charge if there are more than one then you square that also e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r plus or minus depending on whether two like charges ions are interacting or unlike uh, charge ions are interacting. And if you compare this with the Leonard Jones potential the attractive part in the Leonard Jones potential was 1 over r raised to 6 it died down very fast. Whereas, in ionic crystals the potential dies down as 1 over r it is very slow and long range. So, that is one difference. Also as I will argue now there is also a repulsive potential between the ions. So, let us begin our discussion on ionic crystals. The ionic crystals that we had discussed earlier were salt, cesium chloride, zinc sulfide and so on. So, we will just focus on those. If I just look at a molecule of sodium chloride, let us see what all is taking place. 
One, you take the Na atom, put some energy in and this goes to Na plus. This I is known as the ionization potential. And for sodium it is of the order of 5 E V. Then you take chlorine and it absorbs an electron goes to C L minus and gives out energy. This is known as electron affinity. Larger A is better are the chances of it capturing an electron. So, what is happening is you are spending energy I minus A to go from N A plus C L to N A plus plus C L minus. If you look through the periodic table, the smallest I is greater than even the largest A. So, I minus A is always positive. Therefore, you are spending energy to make these ions and the way you get it back is because now these ions can interact. So, these ions N A plus and C L minus if they are at a distance r, they have an energy minus E square over 4 pi epsilon 0 1 over r. So, you gain this much energy, you had spent energy I and then you also gain I minus A. So, this is the cohesive energy if you like of NaCl molecule. If they did not come close together and got this minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over r, I would have to spend energy I minus A to form this and you know this will be unstable. So, what is happening is that these N A plus and C L minus are getting attracted towards each other, they will keep coming close. Why should they stop? What stops them? So, the, the, the force that stops them from getting very close is the repulsive potential energy as r becomes very small. And this energy is of the form Kittel uses lambda e raised to minus r over rho lambda and rho are parameters. And instead of that capital R, I will write small r. This is in Kittel. Ashcroft Merman uses C over R raised to M. C is unknown, and M, if you recall, in the noble gas systems, it was. R is to 12, M was 12 and that was fitted through noble uh, the, the ideal gas or low density gas equation of state. So, this is from Kittel C and M are two parameters. This is from Ashcroft and Marmin. In any case, so there is a repulsive potential. Now, if you look at these potentials, the minus 1 over part is 
long range and goes like this right minus 1 over r and then you have the repulsive part here This is like e raised to minus r over rho or 1 over r raised to m and together the potential would look something like this. The repulsive part is short range, in fact very short range and the coulomb part is long range. This really affects still far away. If I were to compare this with Leonard Jones, Leonard Jones, when the r was close to 0, was very large and then it was short range, so it kind of died down very fast. This is more like 1 over r raised to 6. So, if you are asked the difference between the two, this is the difference. The Coulomb potential is long range, dies down very slowly, its magnitude is larger and 1 over r is to 6 dies down very fast and this is short range. Once we have decided what the potential form is, rest of the calculation proceeds exactly like what we did for noble gas atoms. We we'll take pair of atoms, pair of ions, add up their energy and get the total energy minimize it and get what the parameters of the system are. So, at this point I like to give you two questions, one is what are the ionization potential I for N A and electron affinity A for C L. You can get it in E V. I would also like you to answer this question, how would one determine C or lambda for ionic molecules. Remember in the case of Leonard Jones potential, it was the gas equation that gave it to you. How would you do it in this case? Would you assume a value of m for C y r m form? Would you assume a value of rho or what all you know? So, so, think about this. So, now we have gotten what the potential energy is between two ions. We have compared this with Leonard Jones and now we want to calculate the energy. of an ionic solid. So, what is happening in this solid? In this solid you have these ions in a lattice. and let me just encircle the other one, one is positive, one is negative. Just making them schematically. So, for fun let me ask you this question also, 
which color do you think represents positive and which one negative ion uh, since i'm asking this for fun let me make a smiley also so i have this arrangement and i want to calculate the total energy now as i said that there are two kinds of forces so if i were to take this ur or the potential energy between two ions it has a component which is short range r over rho and minus or plus or minus depending on the distance or which ion we are talking about 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 e square over r. And we just add it up. Now, before I do that let me just put something straight. If we take n molecules of ionic or ionic molecule ionic of ions then there are 2 n ions one positive one negative for example if i look at nacl its structure is like this it is also a good practice to go back to the structure once in a while and see what is going on then we understand it better. So, I will put these ions here and the other one side in the middle. Then you have one right here, here and so on. So, they are alternating and each one of them again I am not giving you which one is positive, which one is negative. Think about it. This forms one molecule. So, there are two n ions. So, when I add and I want to calculate total energy E total, it is going to be sum over i j i th n j th ion and one half. This one half is to avoid double counting because when I am adding over i and j both I am calculating the interaction energy between i and j and j and i which should be counted only once and of course, i is not equal to j. Now, again as we argued in the case of noble gas solids each ion positive or negative is surrounded by the same environment of ions. If there is a positive ion all the negative ions are surrounding it then there is a positive layer then there is a negative layer and vice versa. So, it does not matter 
whether I take ith ion to be positive or negative. So, I can choose ith ion to be positive or negative ion. So, what we are calculating now is we are calculating E total which is equal to one half summation i j energy u r i j and since each ion is surrounded by the same environment I can write this just like we did for noble gas atoms 2 n summed over j j not equal to 0 this is i not equal to j times u r i j and I can tell you that this will be independent of i. So, this then is equal to n times summation j not equal to 0 u r i j. n is the number of molecules, the ionic molecules and but the sum j is over all ions. Okay, so, got to keep that in mind. Although I am multiplying by n, number of ions is 2 n and I am summing over all the ions. Now, when I do this sum, summation j u r i j, we take repulsive potential into account only for nearest neighbors. So, question is how do we justify the statement above. Remember that while doing the noble gas solids, we summed over all, all atoms for both repulsive and attractive. Here I am going to do this only for nearest neighbors. In that case, E total comes out to be equal to n times if you take only the nearest neighbors, you get the nearest neighbor number, let us call it, Kittel calls it z. So, I am going to write z lambda e raise to minus r over rho. And then I am summing over the ionic interaction plus let me write it as minus because that is attractive part alpha, alpha and it will be attractive. So, alpha e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 summation j and I am going to write plus and minus 1 over p i j r where r is the shortest ionic distance and plus and minus depends on because you are going to get alternatively plus and minus charges. So, let us write it again in an ionic solid E total is equal to n times z lambda e raise to minus r over rho minus alpha this is going to be an n also sorry I did miss that in the previous slide e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 summed over j plus or minus 1 over p i j and r I can take out. 
So, I am measuring the distance in terms of the smallest distance between the ions. Uh, this alpha is not there, I am going to define this. So, this alpha is unnecessary. Let me write this mistake. mistake. This actually represents this. Now, this summation j plus minus 1 over p i j is known as meddling sum and I am going to write this as alpha which is known as meddling constant. So, let us see what does it look like? It will look like 1 plus if 1 is positive then next one is going to be negative minus a half plus 1 third minus a 4 and in all 3 D. So, it is minus half all around. So, there will be some 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 number here, some number here, some number here and this is a difficult sum the series does not give a unique answer in 3D and the reason is if you add some more terms you get a different answer. So, you can get any answer pretty much as you like and the physical reason for that is You see, suppose I have this schematically a positive charge, then I surround it with negative charge, then I surround it with positive charge again, and then surround it with negative charge again. Depending on how far I carry the sum, you will keep changing the number. If I terminate it at positive charge, there will be one number then I add this negative charge there will be another number and so on. So, it is necessary to calculate it through other means and let me just look back at when we derived the expression what we assume. When we said that E total is equal to n times z lambda e raise to minus r over rho minus now I can write alpha e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 r. We assumed one the system is neutral and two there are no surfaces. If there are no surfaces or they are far away, which basically implies there is no surface charge. So, if there is no surface charge, then the problem that I just wrote physically, if you alternate between plus and negative, plus and minus charges, the series does not converge properly. So, you have to make sure that when you are doing this sum, you know you, you, you take care of these things and this is done. So, the sum involves some something more than what we did for noble gas solids. So, there are tricks to do that which I am not going, going to go into, but this can be evaluated. So, alpha is equal to summation i j plus or minus 1 over p i j can be calculated. One case where I can calculate analytically is 1 d case. In 
1 d I have plus minus plus minus plus minus and these charges from minus infinity to plus infinity and if I start say adding from this point onwards then I would have alpha is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 or this will be minus sign plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 and so on times 2 for the two sides and this is like 2 times log of 1 plus x with x equals 1. So, this is 2 log 2. So, in this case in 1 d case I can derive it exactly. But before I go any further let me ask you this question what happens to surface charges and other arguments we gave earlier in 1 d case. So, in general also we can calculate it, but it requires special tricks. So, this alpha has been calculated alpha for any C L structure is 1.747 and some more numbers. I have given you an SEL structure earlier alpha for cesium chloride structure is 1.7626 then one has calculated for zinc blend and things like those right. So, those that has been calculated rest is very simple now you write this E total equals n times z lambda e raise to minus r over rho minus alpha e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 r sorry this is r and minimize e total with respect to r to get equilibrium distance between plus and minus ion this is the smallest r distance and calculate the energy. You do that and you get E total to be equal to n times minus alpha E square over 4 pi epsilon 0 r 0 where r naught is the answer for the minimization plus alpha e square over 4 pi epsilon 0 rho over r 0 square which is equal to minus n alpha e square over 4 pi epsilon naught r 0 1 minus rho over r naught that is the answer. I have done this calculation for the exponential form of the repulsive potential you can also do it for c over r is to m and and then get your answer. So, this is this is all there is to negative ions right I will be giving you problems more you do them and you know more you learn about it. So, let me now conclude this lecture by saying the concept of Madelon constant or equally well Madelon energy has been
been given for ionic crystals and then E total has been calculated. Now, this 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 calculation requires a little more attention than in uh, noble gas solids and that is something I emphasize. In your exercises, I will give you to do this computer sum and see that the series convergence is very very slow in ionic case right. So, and then, then I will give you references for where to find to do it properly. Thank you.